Thank you for joining Rundown Valley United Methodist Church for our remote worship for May 12th, 2024. It is Mother's Day. It is also the second Sunday of the month, and faithful watchers will know what that means. It means it's our second Sunday supper in Stone Ridge at 2 o'clock. And yes, we know it's Mother's Day, and yes, we're still having a free second Sunday supper. So come and bring bring a neighbor. A big thank you to all of those friends and neighbors and church folks who baked and dug plants and came here yesterday and worked long and hard to uh, make the plant sale and garden tea party to go a, a big success. And again, thank you for joining us today. Please join me in the call to worship. Clap your hands, people of God. Shout to God with cries of joy. Look to the heavens, brothers and sisters in Christ. Witness the power of our God. Clap your hands, people of God. Shout to God with cries of joy. And now let us pray together. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you revealed to us a power that has no parallel. May the eyes of our heart be enlightened to this power and all it has done in our lives. Pour out your spirit of power upon us, that we may proclaim your glory and your grace. Amen. Today's first reading is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote, all, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. 
While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Today's second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The Gospel today is from John chapter 17. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you had given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. How often do we turn our eyes to the sky? What do we expect to see there? Blue cloud, blue skies, clouds, stars, storms, birds? I often see signs in the clouds. After my grandma Flo Lau passed away, I started noticing the sun rays beaming down through a break in the clouds. They always make me think she is still watching over me, and often seem to appear when I need a little boost. After my grandma Phyllis Rose passed, it was rainbows. Sometimes just a little glimpse, like a prism shining in the sky. Sometimes the whole beautiful bow, but always a burst of color letting me know everything is all right. Driving home from dinner on vacation in Florida in May 2022, there was a beautiful rainbow in the sky. I was convinced that at any moment I would get a message from my mom saying my grandpa Dan Rose had passed away. 
Instead, it was a text that her cousin Mike had died in an accident. But I still remember that rainbow as Grandma welcoming her, her nephew home. The Bible is full of stories with sky imagery. If I asked you, where is heaven, what would you answer? My bet is you said some version of up in the sky. I know I did. That is why I so often turn there for signs of comfort. But biblical images are often so much more dramatic. Think of Old Testament images like God speaking from a cloud or Elijah being taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. Think of the New Testament and a sky filled with angels announcing Christ's birth. This week in the cycle of the church, we are celebrating Ascension Sunday. Jesus rose from the dead on Easter and then continued to appear among his disciples, teaching them for 40 days until he was taken up to heaven. The story itself comprises only a few lines at the end of Luke 24 and referenced in Acts 1. It doesn't appear in the other Gospels, and the image is simple. Jesus was carried up to heaven, perhaps in a cloud. There was no fanfare or host of angels as at his birth. No chariot of fire and a whirlwind as with Elijah. And yet for centuries, this image of Jesus ascending to heaven has been a steadfast tenet of our faith. When I first read this week's scriptures, I had trouble making them come together. Acts and Luke were very similar, which is why I chose the alternate gospel reading of John. The power of God was suggested as a theme for the week when I looked up sermon ideas, but that didn't speak to me either. The whole Bible ultimately stands as a testament to the power of our God. So what led me to these verses, and what could I possibly say to all of you about them? And then it hit me. These verses are about more than just the power of God on display. These three potentially disparate readings pulled from the lectionary cycle are about the empowerment of the people of God. We are not meant to spend our lives gazing in awe at the sky as God's power is revealed. We are meant to live our lives in celebration of the power God has passed to us. We are meant to go out into the world and share the stories we have learned and the gifts that we have received. In Acts, we are reminded that after he was raised from the dead, Jesus did not immediately ascend into heaven. He appeared to his followers and continued his teachings right up until that last moment. His last words were a spoiler alert that the power of God was about to descend upon them, but even more, that they were to take that power as witnesses and spread the word to the ends of the earth. In Ephesians, Paul reminds his audience, which includes even us centuries later, of the power of God, but also of what it means for all those who believe. He prays for all of us to receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation as we come to know the power of God. He names Christ as the head of the church, or as the head and the church as the body. And I see this as a reminder that Jesus gave us the word, and it is up to us as that body to do the work of spreading the word. Finally, in the reading from John, Jesus is praying to God right before he is betrayed and arrested. He talks of spreading the word and the truth of God to his disciples, and he asks God to protect them after he is gone, as they go out into the world to spread the word and truth of God to others. The power of God came down on earth in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, and is passed to all of us as his followers, as we continue to spread that word. In the end, I don't think the image of Jesus ascending into heaven needs to be epic because it is only a tiny part of his journey. We should remember his life on earth and the word of God that he helped to spread. It is enough to know he is up there watching over us as we continue his ministry to spread that word throughout the world. So today, on this Ascension Sunday, I hope you will all take a moment to look up at the sky. Perhaps you will see a sign that brings you hope or comfort when you need it. Perhaps you will be reminded of the power of God as he carried his son up to sit at his right hand. But I hope that you will also remember 
the power that rests on you as a child of God, and the empowerment you have been given to go out and share the truth of God with others. As we gather our hearts in prayer, there are so many things to be grateful for as the season gets warmer and plants are growing. And one of the things I am grateful for today is the, the work of lay servant Rebecca Lau, and I'm very grateful for Becky's doing the sermon and so much else for this week especially after being here for the whole plant sale and tea party to go. So with joyful and grateful hearts, let us gather in prayer. We thank you, redeeming God, for the glorious message that you bring new hope out of despair, resurrection out of defeat, and new life out of death. You call dry bones to dance. You give living water so that new life blossoms. You urge flowers to push their way through winter-hardened soil. We bring before you the dead and dried out places in our lives that through your touch we may discover newness of life. Forgotten dreams, lapsed intentions, hardened resentments, griefs to which we cling like children, who cling to a worn but cherished toy or blanket, these we hand over to you, knowing that you will return them mended, washed, renewed, transformed. We bring before you the places in our lives and in our world where despair reigns unchallenged. With grief, we bring our concerns for Israel and Gaza, Ukraine, Sudan, and other parts of the world where the cycle of violence goes on and on. Point us toward actions, however small, which lead to a more hopeful future for ourselves and for the world. Open the eyes of our hearts to approach others with justice and mercy. Gracious God, we thank you that you walk beside us as we journey through life because you are with us, we accept each new day with its joys and sorrows as a gift. Because you are with us, we gain courage to meet the challenge of the day, choosing life and not death as we move through time. As you raised Jesus from the dead, raise us to new life day by day. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Amen.